so good afternoon to our few students um, today um, as i have mentioned before that uh, i will try to be end up the water pollution part uh, in the previous video i have discussed about the uh, the different sources of pollution then your um, the effects of water pollution like eutrophication biomagnification then uh, other things like we have discussed today i will uh, discuss about the measures or steps taken to control water pollution uh, including the legislations like i have mentioned the water prevention and control of pollution act okay which is uh, being done to somehow mitigate somehow reduce the pollution of the water okay so so let's get started now so the control of water pollution uh, we will discuss now now normally uh, what are the ways to control water pollution the first point is uh, use of organic fertilizer instead of using inorganic fertilizer that can be easily degraded to form less harmful products so the fertilizers that we are using even the pesticides and herbicides that we are using in the fields in the agricultural fields to control the pests to control the weeds uh, by using organic fertilizer or organic pesticides or herbicides we can not only control the pests the weeds and improve the quality of the plant but also we can also able to degrade that or uh, that fertilizer in a easy way so that less harmful products can be produced so by using organic fertilizer or organic pesticides or herbicides it will be applied to the fields for their purposes and at the same time when their job is over when their work is over that organic fertilizer will can be easily be degraded and form less toxic or less harmful products which will be beneficial for the environment and it will somehow reduce the pollution of the water if somehow surface runoff occurs obviously surface runoff will occur during monsoon season as it will be washed away and collected to the water bodies second step uh, to control water pollution is establishment of septic tanks oxidation tanks filter beds water treatment plants municipal sewage treatment plants in order to remove the biological and chemical pollutants in the water now so vast amount of water waste water is being generated in the cities in the towns in hospitals in schools wherever you are working large amount of waste water is being produced for that we have to in a step by step manner we have to treat that waste water so as to remove the toxic elements in that water now that toxic elements are coming from the biological origin like fecal matter and other things and it can also comes from the chemical sources like the industrial waste most of the industrial waste will contain chemical pollutants and from the municipal sewage plants from the municipal sewage uh, wastewater most of the waste is of from biological origin so for that reason to treat that water we can use separate septic tanks uh, oxidation tanks where oxygen will be supplied in order to break down that organic matter if present in the water filter beds so as to remove away the particulate matters to remove away the suspended particles or the particles which are coming from that wastewater like plastics scraps okay and we can also establish water treatment plants in a separate way in order to treat that particular wastewater 
municipal sewage plant can also be uh, installed in uh, the cities to remove the biological and chemical pollutants in the water now generally all the waste water treatment plant i will give an overview here all the waste water treatment plant can be employed depending on what type of waste water you are utilizing you are using suppose it is an industrial waste water then industrial waste water plant will be installed <coughs> if it is a municipal um, sewage water then we can go for municipal sewage treatment plant so in all of these different uh, wastewater treatment plants generally uh, the general thing the general uh, you can say things that normally present in the wastewater treatment plant is uh, and they go for three or four ways actually okay the first way has not been mentioned the first way to treat the wastewater depending on what water source you are working on industrial wastewater or municipal wastewater so there are four steps uh, you can say to treat that wastewater okay i am writing them down the first step is your preliminary treatment pre Li me nari preliminary preliminary treatment. So in the preliminary treatment, uh, actually what we do, uh, all the scraps, all the what we can say those who are not suspended in the water all the scraps all the grease or oil type of things which does not mix with the water they has to be removed out in the preliminary treatment the second uh, uh, step of wastewater treatment is your primary treatment primary uh, it will be why primary treatment in primary treatment all the small small particles which can be settled but uh, due to uh, movement of the water it cannot able to settle down so we go for primary treatment where there is a large tank called sedimentation tank in that sedimentation tank it will uh, with the help of gravitational pull uh, and slow movement of water very slow movement of water that so solid particles will settle down the third step is your secondary treatment secondary treatment i will show you the images don't worry secondary treatment in the secondary treatment secondary treatment in the secondary treatment it is also called as biological treatment because here in this step we uh, actually remove the organic matter uh, in the water by biological method that is by using microorganisms so microorganisms are employed in this secondary treatment and we use those microorganisms which will utilize that organic matter if present in the water <coughs> the fourth step the fourth step is your tertiary treatment tertiary treatment in tertiary treatment we use some chemicals we use some chemicals to use to remove away the organic remaining organic and inorganic pollutants in the water now within this tertiary treatment we also use some chemical agents to or you can say disinfectants also to remove away the pathogenic organisms in the water also like using of chlorine bleaching powder okay then we can also use ultraviolet radiations to remove away the pathogenic organisms 
if present in the water we like uh, you have seen in, in some filter there is ro ro uv okay ro means reverse osmosis in this process we can able to remove the remaining uh, small particles in the water and uv is used to kill away those pathogenic organisms in the water so mainly generally there are four steps in the uh, wastewater treatment already i have mentioned here in this notes three steps <coughs> primary secondary tertiary but there is another step before primary treatment that is your preliminary treatment so let us see what has been written in these notes so the first treatment is actually the preliminary treatment i am showing you the peak image now let us see the image first so the first step is your preliminary treatment the first step is your preliminary treatment in this preliminary treatment what we remove here it is written remove the coarse solids sand grit plastics okay so this type of um, solids which can be settled to the bottom easily because of their heavy dense heavy density uh, they can settle to the bottom they have to be removed by preliminary treatment otherwise what will happen if we don't remove these things it will clog the pipes and can uh, prevent the other treatment process to work efficiently it may also damage the system also next comes the primary treatment in the primary treatment what is their simple thing in primary treatment there is a primary sedimentation tank a large tank okay in that large tank we are allowing that wastewater to enter but at a slow rate so slow that it will not move quickly and as it is not moving quickly very slowly they are moving the small particles can be settled to the bottom so that's why it is written that in the primary treatment we use primary uh, sedimentation tank where most of the small particles which are suspended in the water they will settle to the bottom because of very slow movement and that solid particle is called as sludge s l u d g e the the solid particles which are found in the wastewater is called sludge okay uh, you can say sludge in your municipality drainage you see the the, the black black thing when the, the municipal corporation workers clean up the drains <coughs> clean up the drains that solid particles is called as sludge now sludge can be of various color depending on from which source of water you are uh, treating like municipal sludge will be black in color okay industrial sludge can vary depending on what type of industries you are dealing with now that sludge that we get from that primary sedimentation tank all the settleable solids they with the help of sludge processing system they are dried and finally they are used for other purpose <coughs> like fertilizers or they may be landfill so as you can see that the sludge or the settleable solids from the primary sedimentation tank it comes to the another treatment process called sludge treatment where the sludge is dried they are oxidized and they are used for other purposes like use of fertilizers or they may be landfill landfill is a process where the land is excavated that means they are they are dug okay they are dug they are dug and we put all those sludge in this uh, in this excavated site and then we will again fill up with the soil particles okay after the primary treatment then comes the secondary treatment 
in the secondary treatment we can see here two things are, have been mentioned here the first thing you can see it is written aeration zone now aeration zone means aeration a e r a t i o n aeration means to provide air okay aeration means simply to provide yeah, it is written air why you are providing air because i have said that secondary treatment is also called as biological treatment in the secondary treatment what we do we actually remove away the organic uh, matter in the uh, water by the activity of microbes so we use some microorganisms good microorganisms who will utilize this air who will utilize this air and will able to and they will able to break down that organic matter in the water now there are various ways through which secondary treatment can be done ठीक okay so this is called secondary treatment actually now there are various ways of doing that like uh, uh, like your uh, trickling filter like your rotating biological contactors different ways through which the secondary treatment is being carried out this much you should remember that in the secondary treatment also called as biological treatment here we use microorganisms so that they can use the air in order to break down the organic matter in the water after this treatment is done then then again they are allowed to go for another sedimentation tank known as secondary sedimentation tank just like the primary sedimentation tank why they use this secondary sedimentation tank is that is because uh, after treatment of this uh, organic matter most of the bacteria most of the microbes that are employed for breaking that organic matter they will settle to the bottom in this secondary sedimentation tank and again that microbes can be used up to repeat that process this is the main reason that why secondary sedimentation tank is being employed here the microbes that are used in the secondary treatment they will settle to the bottom in this secondary sedimentation tank and as a result as a uh, result what will happen as a result that settable that settle, settleable uh, microbes can be employed again can be used again for the biological treatment for the secondary treatment so this process is repeated two to three times so that complete oxidation of the organic matter can be carried out next is the now here also the excess solid particles in the secondary sedimentation tank also called as secondary sludge they can also be employed for the sludge treatment <coughs> the final treatment is called the tertiary treatment in tertiary treatment as i have said that tertiary treatment is mainly done to remove away the pathogenic organisms in, present in the water by various processes like by using chlorine uh, process is known as chlorination chlorination where we use chlorine in order to remove the pathogenic organism we can also use uh, uv radiation where for a certain period of time we allow uv rays to enter okay we can also use other um, modes as well like uh, using by precipitation of these pathogenic organism by using alum in bengali it is known as fitkeri alum we can also use ferric chloride we can also use lime lime mane chun chuna sometimes we can also use activated charcoal or activated carbon to remove away the remaining suspended matter in the water <coughs> so this is all about the wastewater treatment general here it has been mentioned that wastewater from the hotel sewer but this can be installed in every aspects of your infrastructure like in the industry 
in the school in college but it is not installed in school but uh, it should be installed in uh, larger places like university where so many departments are there in a um, uh, government office okay so that before discharging this water into the ponds into the oceans into any water bodies it should be less polluted it should be less harmful okay in this way we can able to control the water pollution so this was about the the water pollution control other uh, other uh, control methods has been mentioned i have said second is uh, use of aquatic plants okay the th the fourth way we can able to we can able to control water pollution is using some biological agents like aquatic plants like water hyacinth <coughs> in bengali it is called kochuri pana normally water hyacinth is found in the ponds sometimes in the rivers also i am showing you the picture now so this is your water hyacinth normally it is grown in the ponds and water hyacinth normally it is a weed actually right it is normally it is a weed plant introduced from somehow from other countries but water hyacinth has very useful properties like it can absorb all the pollutants most of the pollutants in the water like mercury like cadmium lead or lead formula is pb sorry for that uh, like lead all the arsenic all the all the heavy metals can be absorbed by this water hyacinth plant it can also be used as a bio indicator as a bio indicator of uh, pollution that means by looking at leaves by looking at the structure of the water hyacinth we can able to determine what type of pollutant the water is facing now water hyacinth has also other properties as well besides uh, its uh, good properties to the environment like your water hyacinth can be used as medicines in treating snake bites in other things also so it has many many properties so by using water hyacinth we can able to remove the biological waste also as well as chemical waste in the water the problem is that water hyacinth grows very rapidly because it is a weed and due to which it cause con congestment con uh, congesting in the water bodies okay it, it inhibits the life of the other aquatic organisms also to remain freely in this water so water hyacinth is a very good plant in controlling in checking the water pollution next it is saying that strict legislation should be enacted to make it obligatory for the industries to treat the wastewater before being discharged into the rivers or seas so it is saying strict laws strict laws should be made should be enacted especially for the industry people because they are chemically waste, polluting the water in a huge amount at the same time uh, it is also our duty also to less pollute the water to to minimize the water wastage okay and that type of legislation should be done that during discharging your wastewater to the water bodies you have to treat that water separately you have to make a separate treatment plant called wastewater treatment plant to minimize the wastes to minimize the pollutants if present in the water and that has been mentioned in india in the water prevention and control of pollution act which was enacted in 
so let us see about the water act well the water act just like air act it is controlled by the state and central pollution control boards uh, if you see so generally the pollution control board in india it has its role in controlling the water pollution as well as air pollution pollution control board in india was first established as central pollution control board in short we can write cpcb in september 1974 under the water prevention and control of pollution act in 1974 so the first act which was legislated in india was water act or you can say water prevention and control of pollution act and at the time they make a committee they make a central pollution control board of members further central pollution control board was also entrusted with the powers and functions under the air act in 1981 later on they are also being empowered to take control over the air quality now what is the function of the pollution control board with respect to the water act as well as air act the first it is saying that this central pollution control board mainly they advise the state central government on any matter concerning prevention and control of air pollution and water pollution and improvement of the quality of air as well as water so they can advise with the central government they can arrange a meeting appointment with the central government and discuss the matter for concerning about water pollution air pollution as well and how to prevent and minimize the air and water pollution and improving the quality of air and water from the past years so they have that power second is to plan sorry second is to plan and execute nation wide programs for the prevention control or abatement of water pollution and air pollution so they can make a plan and by planning they can put that plan into effect execute means to put this plan into effect only planning does not make use make you to solve that air pollution or water pollution you have to put that plan into effect to the citizens of india so they make nation wide programs okay in order to prevent and control the or minimize the water pollution as well as air pollution third central pollution control board coordinate the activities of the state pollution control board and resolve disputes among them so they coordinate the functions of the state pollution control board and they resolve the disputes within them in order to resolve in order to minimize the water pollution it provide technical assistance and guidance to the state government sorry guidance to the state boards carry out and sponsored investigations research related to the problems of water and air pollution and for their prevention control and abatement that means they can go for investigations they can go for guidance okay they can go for technical assistance technical assistance means they can do research related research also technically with the help of uh, non governing authority or with the help of governing authority also like large large labs has been set up for uh, for testing the quality of air and water like i have mentioned some of them like to check the water quality we can 
go for checking their dissolved oxygen do then we will go for checking their bod that is biochemical oxygen demand then we can go for checking the cod level of that water okay then we can go for presence of heavy metals in the water or not okay then another thing is there we can go for coliform test coliform test coliform test is normally done to check for the coliform bacteria the normal bacteria which are present in our gut in our body now presence of too much of coliform bacteria is an indication that uh, that water has been contaminated with municipal sewage right so these type of tests are normally conducted and it is pro help guided by the state boards and they carried out investigation investigation like you can read you can you, by publicly speaking you can see you can go and read that particular industries and then taking their sample and uh, investigate and research and then they can uh, consult with the central government to look into this matter and they will give a notice okay and in this way we can able to settle the disputes settle the water related problems but uh, truly speaking uh, most of the case as you can see in the film also that uh, most of the th case what happen when they try to investigate uh, they give a big amount of money as a bribery and um, they put off that case put off that investigation now this should be not done because day by day our quality of air is going to be reduced and there will be a time when our average lifespan it has been mentioned in the who uh, that by the time when we are at 2099 year the average age of human being will become 40 okay so this means that the quality of air water and all the natural resource is going to be in a bad quality and that's why we have to sustainably we have to use the resource we have to try to minimize the effects of pollution minimizing the pollution so that we can get good quality of air next is collect compile and publish technical and statistical data related to the water and air pollution and the measures devised for their effective prevention control or abatement by preparing manu manuals codes guidelines related to the relating to the treatment and disposal of sewage and trade effluent as well as for the stack glass gas cleaning device stack and ducts i think it will be dusts so the next important function of the central pollution control board uh, related with the air pollution as well as water pollution we can collect the samples we can compile the samples and we can publish by doing research of that samples we can publish uh, in a technical way okay in a statistical way we can publish statistics you know that statistics is a good re way of representation to show the data okay huge amount of data can be shown in a very good way that how much we are polluting what is the concentration of the pollutants now in the water in the air and that measures devised for effective prevention control or abatement and this is and then we can they will follow the measures the steps to be taken to minimize the water pollution as well as air pollution and how they can minimize how they can they, they took the measures what type of steps they will take like by preparing manuals by preparing code by preparing guideline okay relating to the treatment and disposal of sewage like one thing i am uh, going to discuss with you 
one thing i am going to discuss with you uh, like if you see the plastics that are being used nowadays the plastic bottles if you see now within the plastic bottles you can see there is an aroma given just like this and between that uh, between that uh, triangle arrow mark uh, there used to be a code like one or two or three now this code are given as uh, it was being proposed by the uh, by the central pollution control boards in everywhere around the world actually to designate that what type of plastics you are using and how much it is harmful like if the code if the code contain uh, if the code contain uh, like this arrow mark if the code contain uh, one it is very very harmful it should be used within one week okay uh, if the code contain if the code contain four or five then it, it can be used for a quite duration of time so uh, normally uh, this type of codes or designations will be given okay and not only that guidelines are also provided uh, guidelines are also being given relating to the treatment disposal of sewage and trade effluent as well as for the stacking gas stack gas cleaning device stacks and ducts so this is about the um, what can i say this is about the the functions of the central pollution control board related with the air pollution and water pollution well other things are also there so the main objective of the water act if i say i have said the function of the state and central pollution uh, board the main objective of water act is to provide prevention and control of water pollution and second thing is maintaining or restoring the wholesomeness and purity of water in the various source of water that how we can able to restore back to its normal form okay like uh, nowadays uh, you see for uh, some years ago uh, the ganga action plan okay uh, in the form of name of namami gange i think um, they has been um, set up that type of registry laws has been set up by the government that their main aim is to clean the ganga river the all the pollutants chemical or biological pollutants will be cleaned up and they may make some restrictions some laws related with the industries who are situated on the side of the ganga river okay okay next it is saying that most of this case water pollution waste waste means legally the regulatory authority is the central pollution control board and the state pollution control board just like the air act uh, the main uh, members who are who got these powers to control these air and water pollution are the state and the central pollution control board the function of the state pollution control board is similar to the central pollution control board the main thing is that their limitation state pollution control board will do the same function like central pollution control board but within a state it will not interfere with the other state but the central pollution control board can interfere with the other states as well by interacting with the state pollution control board next it empowers the central pollution control board and state pollution control board to establish and enforce effluent standard for factories discharging pollutants into water body so they make some standard they make some effluent standard that what type of pollutant you should uh, you can able to uh, discharge into the water bodies and in what concentration in how much concentration you can able to discharge that type of pollutant not more than that this type of effluent standard is being uh, provided by the state and the central pollution control board like uh, for making you easier 
uh, I'm saying in case of noise pollution, like if you see in festivals, in uh, the government has uh, strictly uh, restricted that not more than 100 decibels should be used. Sound should be uh, made. Now, not more than 100 decibels sound, that means uh, the bursting of uh, crackers. Most of the crackers like chocolate bomb, you know, then the big, the bombs that are used in, in Bengali, say, narkel bomb, they make more than 100 decibels. So most of the case you will see, you will see in the news that during festivals that some of the crackers are being banned. They are raided by the police, okay, followed by the stress, central and the state pollution control boards. So just like that, here also there are some, uh, you can say, there are some standard for discharging the pollutants in the water bodies, okay, and not more than that the pollutants should not be released not more than that actually so some restrictions has been made okay now for the union territories uh, in case of union territories which are small small areas they are also controlled by the central pollution control board in the same way it also formulate policies related to the prevention of water pollution and coordinate the activities of different central state pollution control board so it coordinate with the activities of the state pollution control board as well okay now uh, the state pollution control boards uh, they control the sewage they control the industrial effluent discharge by approving by rejecting or impose condition while granting consent to the discharge so they control the sewage they control the industrial effluent by approving that yes you may able to discharge the pollutant but you have to treat them they can also reject also suppose if there is a radioactive plant and they are not treating their waste properly and they are directly dumping into the water bodies then the state pollution control board can interfere and can reject their emission of their waste into the water bodies okay they may also grant that you may able to discharge also so these type of things are actually performed by the water in the water act by the state as well as for the central pollution control board well here i have written what do you mean by effluent standard effluent standards are actually some of the pollutants which are actually uh, in what concentration you can able to release them not more than that it is written here effluent standard are the concentration of the pollutants well i have written in short form the concentration C O C N this means concentration okay so I have written short uh, word please try to see this is known as concentration so effluent standard are the concentration of pollutants expressed in parts per million for wastewater discharge so they actually um, put that standard in the form of parts per million the how many parts of the pollutant will be used to release not more than that okay so this was all about the control of water pollution i hope you have understood what i have discussed with you all today just go through it i am again uploading this one well uh, I have uploaded uh, yesterday also so just after going through that lecture you study this lecture uh, in the next class I, I will uh, discuss about more things like uh, I can go for the another chapter also like biodiversity okay which are not being discussed here in these classes okay